I'll often do this method with like points and blown parts of the glass. So if I have like a large tubing section and I want to blow it out, then I can um, create more volume and make it larger. And I make large like monstera leaves that way and make really just big massive things. We're just going to keep it simple because I think it's great to see how you can utilize that. Right, we're just going to baby this a little bit more this time. It 
all depends on what you want. Like right now, I'm not tooling it because I don't want too many like teaser marks, but maybe I do want that. And I'm probably gonna start to tool it. So if you wanna have like a pristine sheet of glass, then don't tool it. If you want it to be textural and funky, then tool it up. It's never really gonna be as pristine as it is when it's just a straight up tube. And if your piece calls for that, so it's having it really clear and optical, then that's fine. But maybe it doesn't. side. When I make like monstera leaves, I try not to tool them unless it's the, the leaf lines. So I'll draw like a, I'll draw lines in for the leaf pattern with like a three millimeter rod and then leave the rest until I pop a hole. one bit at a time and kind of finding the sections where it ripples in and then mostly use gravity and then give it a little encouragement. I'm going to flip axis here or I'm going to flip handle side. wear like my welding jacket when I do these real big because it, it gets a pretty intense amount of radiant heat. Now if I were to like to bench cool this and then reheat it, it would be like super sketchy because the tube has like a much stronger stress memory than like a straight up rod. It's more finicky. So just something to be a little sensitive about is don't be afraid to flame and yell or garage your work.
this is how you can make flower petals, like wings of large winged creatures, etc., etc. Um, you can get some very beautiful sensitive forms, like really gorgeous sensitive flower petals that are like really fluid and delicate um, and can achieve a much more naturalistic, realistic look than if you were to just um, do the method where you squish a, a flat block. Jumping around with a small sharp flame here is another stress element. Thinking about that. So this is like pretty thick. This is still the original thickness of the tube. So this will make a nice element if I wanted to make a whole bunch and attach them together. I'm going to um, do a little bit more spacing in here. personal techniques, which is this idea of heating, building up a heat base, creating a fluid section, and then pulling. Totally extra, you don't have to do this step, but it's like something I really enjoy doing.
cooking over here. I usually choose to do this demo on like a colder day. <laughs> it's a lot hotter than I thought. At least I have the blast shield. Because all the flame just like, all the heat sort of builds back into your... Do you know how to do that? I will wait till this is done. I don't want to make it crazy. I make it windy though. And it's yeah, let's do that afterwards. Be nice. So I like to make the holes because then we can transform them and create shapes by pulling them out that wouldn't really be achievable in otherwise situations. So you can like get your reamer and ruffle all the edges to make like a fabric look. If you're making like a skeleton form for something, like sort of the outline base form, like you're making like um like a table and you want to make like a tablecloth, there's a way you can do that. You just don't shape it quite as much as I do, but you can really achieve some cool stuff here. I had a student student once a whole bunch of these open tube forms and attach them together into like an abstract sculpture and it was talking about sort of like the afterlife and you know the physical and the not physical realm and kind of ghosts as a memorial to somebody and it's quite effective um, talking about these sort of like ethereal forms Glass tools and do some funky stuff with that. Even a reamer. 
Every pool makes a different shape, makes a different mark. Because that's just more ergonomic for my cutting. If it's straight, I have to be like, eh, eh, eh. So yeah, slight angle like that. It's just easier. You can also use a thin rod, like a three or four millimeter rod, and wind the glass away, build the heat face, and wind it away in the same way. I mean, always do that whenever I'm working with like a hollow blown bubble. Um, anytime you cut into glass, it's going to leave stress. So if it's a massive piece, it's like a little bit less stressful. You'll get the stress out as soon as you go back with the torch and heat and keep heating it. Just going to think about. It also adds the 